Hey, check that out. We in focus. Hey guys. Um, oh. Hey, so we're live. Uh, finally, um, got the new computer and got that all set up. Ooh. Um, gosh, I need new glasses. These are so crooked. Um, I've actually got an appointment to get new glasses because uh, I don't know, but like my my head, I have a very large head, and so I've kind of destroyed these glasses. Um, anyway, got the new computer set up. Got the new computer. Um, got it all set up. Um, and the reason why I, <laughs> I had to figure out where to put it, <laughs> essentially, um, amongst other things. So. Um, for the things that go on your desk, like your monitor, your keyboard, you know, your mouse, it has a you know a bunch of USB ports. And the problem that I found is because this computer, the actual case for the computer is so much larger than the case for my old computer, um, I didn't have a good place to put it. So I had to put it behind my desk. But unfortunately, that put the the open USB ports out of reach of the cables for the microphone and uh, the webcam. <laughs> so uh, I had to figure that out. Um, plus, you know, just figuring out how to set up, you know, on the new computer, all the stuff um, for streaming. But here we are. Um, hopefully this is working. Hopefully you can hear me. And um, we'll finish this, pop them today. Uh, but first, as always, uh, if you enjoy what you see me do and want to see more of my work, you can check out my Instagram at justwondering.brad. Um, and if you want to buy any of the flies that you see me tie on stream or support the channel, uh, you can check out my Etsy shop, Studio1213. Um, I know it's popular amongst streamers um, in other genres to uh, you know ask for money through things like Patreon, let me see. I might have to adjust this. Center. Let's see, sorry, not the best background. I do apologize. Um, so I know in other genres, it's popular for people to ask for money through Patreon and, and such. I, 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 I don't want to do that. I don't want to just ask you for money. I want to give you something in return, which is why I have the Etsy shop. Um, also, it takes a lot of space to store these flies. <laughs> um, and when you live in a, a sub 1,000 square foot apartment um, with a family, uh, yeah, space is kind of at a premium. So, you know, I've got a couple of those magnetic display fly boxes that I've, I've showed you. Um, and that's it. That's it for storage. Um, you know, these racks that you can see here, that's storage for other stuff. Um, not fly tying. Actually, I think maybe the, that bin right there is fly tying, but that's it. That's, and then plus my travel case and that's it. <laughs> so, um, the magnetics and besides, you know, like this travel case here, not very good for storing flies, obviously not going to store them in a bin like that. So um, the magnetic storage boxes are, are my best solution right now. And I've only got so much space in them. <clears throat> All right. Anyway, um, as usual, uh, switching to black thread to do the wings. and finish out the fly. Uh, this is just uh, Legarten, like 74 denier black Legarten. I'm just gonna start this. Now I'm, I'm feeling a little bit rusty, I'm not gonna lie. So today we're gonna take it pretty chill. Um, I have taken the liberty of already marrying up the wings. Uh, again, just to, to save a little bit of time, save a little bit of interest. Um, there may be a 
There may be a separate instructional video on marrying wings. Um, hopefully soon. Speaking of like instructional videos, I do hope to be, you know, filming some. I've done a couple of test runs, um, not for fly tying, but for some other things that I'm doing video videography for. Um, and if I'm honest, uh, I'm not happy with the quality. Um, <clears throat> the the issue that I'm having is finding consistently good lighting. Uh, again, small apartment, don't have a lot of space for equipment. I would love to have two um, like ring lights or something that could shine over my shoulder and then have like a light box that I could put behind um, the fly. But that that takes up space and you can see, I mean, just from this little bit of shot here that space is kind of a little bit tight right now. Um, but we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. Uh, but yeah, consistent lighting, um, for, uh, for those, <laughs> I have very little experience in cinematography, um, uh, filmography, that sort of thing. Um, the only experience I have is from high school. Uh, my high school had a, uh, a student run um, a TV station. And uh, I, I used to do independent study for that. Um, and uh, I basically edited, filmed and edited like a couple of ads for them. Um, and because I was independent study, I was never there for the actual broadcast. So I was never on the broadcast team. Um, plus a few short features uh, and, and of course student short films. So that's my experience. Um, but I know enough about like lighting and white balance and that sort of thing to know that in order to get good, good video, you need to have consistent lighting. And basically what happens is I go to film something and if I have to take a break and I come back a little bit later, light conditions have shifted and when you edit it all together, it's obvious because you have a, a red shift or a blue shift and you can't, it's difficult to get rid of it um, without being very obvious about it. Uh, I would like to be less obvious about it or at least, or be able to have cons like a consistent lighting setup. So we'll, we'll, uh, we're, we're figuring that out. So the underwing for the popum is listed as golden pheasant tippets and strands, uh, which just means instead of tying in a whole feather like you would say for a modern um, green highlander, uh, this is just tied in as strips. Um, so I'm gonna pull a few strips. Uh, and we're just going to tie them in. And it doesn't matter if these strips get messed up because, again, in strands. I'm actually going to... Just so they tie in, tie in a little bit neater, I'm gonna tie them in upside down. Um, it's a little bit of a cheat, not gonna lie. Um, it is undoubtedly one the the old timers would have approved of though, I think. Um, in fact, in some of the illustrations, it does look like the wings are in fact tied upside down, tied in upside down, like the whole wing. Um, So, you know, it is maybe a thing they did anyway. Yeah. All right. 
And again, we are just in a display fly, I feel. Um, we're just building layers of texture. Now, there's not actually that many layers in the wing of a, of a um, price tan at Popham um, because there's the underwing, the main wing, um, there are large wood duck sides and a topping, and that's it. <laughs> there's no there's no sides, there's no cheeks, there's no eyes, um, there's no bronze mallard roof. Uh, it's actually a fairly simple wing. Um, the only most challenging part about the wing is that there's a ton of stuff in the wing. Um, and so you end up with, if you, if you end up, if you try to do like the, the normal wing thing, you end up with quite a chonky wing. And, oh, by the way, here's the wing that I, I, I married up. And as you can see, it is very chunky. Um, but I think it'll look good. We'll see. We're gonna try and do this. This may be pretty thick. So I'm gonna use a little bit of saliva just because it's convenient. Just soften up some of these fibers here. And then we're going to soft loop. And then as usual, we're gonna press up with this end and kind of just meet it in the middle. Man, not a lot of room to spare on that one. Right. Try not to pull the uh, golden pheasant. All right, um, I'm gonna pull that off. Um, So this, the golden pheasant, uh, the top bit on um, on one side, I actually had trouble with it marrying it into the wing. So I kind of suspected that that would split. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to just grab another chunk and remarry that top bit into the wing. One second. <laughs> Golden Pheasant is not my favorite. Um, I much prefer um, the Amherst Golden Pheasant Hybrid Amgold. I, my sense is, my feel is that it marries to things, other things better, and it also compresses better when you're trying to set a wing. All, you know, which are important characteristics. Um, to, you know, play well in a big, thick, married wing like this. Okay. Um. to go and do that. Right. Sorry, my fingers are gonna get in the way for just a little bit here. This 
his wings a little bit thick. I just need <laughs> I need slightly stubbier and fatter fingers here. I don't think anybody ever says that, but sometimes it's true. Okay. So far, okay. Oh, that is a thick wing. <laughs> that is a that is a chunky wing. Now you can see here. Um, now that I've got it uh, mounted on the fly, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten down my wraps. I'm just going to trim a little bit before I talk about it. I want to make sure that this thing is secure as can be. Anyway, all right, so where did my, ah, I'm losing things. Um, Okay, so I, I want to just point out a little bit of why, what my thought process was behind the color, well, not the color choices, because it's dictated by the pattern, but just the order in which I've done things. I wanted there to be a little bit of complexity, but because there are so many different elements in this wing, some of the complexity was just going to be natural, right? So simply by marrying everything together in one, you know, without any additional mixing, it was going to be complex or look complex anyway. But one of the things that I really love is when you get, in this case, if you look at the red and yellow here, it kind of, if you if you hold the fly out at arm's length and blur your eyes a little bit, it turns into orange. And because there's so much orange on the rest of the fly, I kind of wanted that red and yellow to have that kind of that color change effect where it's like red and yellow close, but it's orange far away. Um, so that's one reason why I mixed those in the wing. Um, and then of course, always put golden pheasant on top um, because you, I feel like the wing, especially since this doesn't have a bronze mallard roof, the wing needs that kind of, neutral tone cap. Um, maybe that's just the way I've been trained because of the bronze mallard roof, you know, flies with bronze mallard roofs, but. Okay, so we're as always gonna wax our thread. And holding everything securely. And then just kind of shaping, shaping the wing until it does what we want it to. Okay. It's 
say when I when I used to start and tie at shows when I first very first started tying at shows, um, I was actually tying in hand because uh, <clears throat> um, I, I, I the very first show I went to I think was the International Fly Tying Symposium um, when it was in uh, Somerset, New Jersey. I was in college. Um, I had to be picked up. Um, at, uh, had a train station and, uh, I, when I got to the show, I was really disappointed to find that the tables were too, too thick to accommodate the, um, the, uh, clamp on my vice. Cause I don't have a pedestal. Um, the, the stem on this vice, uh, is, a, is an unusual like thickness <laughs> and it doesn't, and like your normal vice pedestals don't like can't fit that stem in it. So I didn't have a I didn't have a vice, um, essentially. And so I was tying in hand. But uh, any anyway, flash forward a couple of years, um, because I was tying in hand, I'd only been tying uh, mixed wing flies. Um, too afraid to try and set uh, you know, a, a big chunky, um, built wing, uh, fly. Now I have to say like trying to set big, um, built wings like this, um, still makes me nervous a little bit. Uh, even though I'm doing it one from the comfort of my own home and two, like, you know, digital audience, but Nonetheless, okay. Now, the fact that there aren't so many sides and things to cover to tie on does make the fly a little bit more simple. simple. Um, <laughs> but it also means that any mistakes you make, very obvious. <laughs> um, you can see where the wing didn't fold just quite right, and that's, that's just going to stay there. Now, what I just did there, um, for those of you who have not seen one of my, seen me tie one of these before, um, in order to tie on things like sides and cheeks, what I do is I tie on one side using my normal thread wraps, which is towards the camera. And then what I do is I reverse the thread to do the other side. And by reversing the thread, it just helps everything stay a little bit more even and flat. And um, And I suppose the nice thing about tying in the camera is that it's almost like a mirror for me, so I can actually see what's going on. But there we go. So now we're just going to reverse the thread back. And all I'm doing is I'm sliding the thread between the point of the blind eye of the hook and the gut, and then simply wrapping back over that. All right. 
like I said, the the accoutrement for the this wing, even though the wing itself is fairly complex, the the rest of it is pretty simple and straightforward. Um, I just noticed a bunch of the neighborhood kids are building a snowman. We are having snow flurries. We've had snow flurries since late, uh, I guess, early, very early this morning, um, and they're continuing even now. And a bunch of the kids are out building a snowman, not wearing masks, but... Oh, cute. <laughs> okay. Now this has two toppings. Um, mm -mm. Where are all my bigger toppings? My other ones? Mm -mm. I'm dropping things. Uh, let's see. Well, it calls it calls for two toppings, but I might be short on big long ones, so we may only just do one today. Now to prep my toppings, all I'm doing is I'm taking um, smooth jawed pliers, I'm flattening the stem at the tie-in point, um, and then I'm going to just determine I'm going to give it just a little bit of a kink. That looks really big on the wing. But at the same time, it matches up well. So I guess I can't complain too much. I have to say, that's not in my normal style, if you know what I mean, um, or if you've seen any of my previous work, but I don't hate it. <laughs> um, that is rather, I will say it's a rather modern kind of classic look. Um, I think, uh, you know, if you've been following any of my work, I tend to tie a little bit more of a, I don't know, not even vintage. It's like the, the style, the style of tying that was popular in like the eighties and seventies. <laughs> I'm an old, uh, I'm an old soul, I guess. But anyway, so this is a little bit more of a kind of early two thousands 
style of classic Atlantic salmon fly, or at least what was being published in the 2000, early 2000s. Um, but anyway, I don't hate it. It looks nice. I think we'll go with that. So gonna wax my thread as normal. Always wax your thread. And then I think it's just horns and we are Okay. All right. Horns. Um, and also, you know, just as a note, as always, this is a bigger hook than I normally tie on. This is a five aught hook. I normally tie on a three aught. Um, I am of the opinion, and I know some people will disagree, but I, I'm of the opinion that 3 aught is about the perfect size salmon fly hook. It's easy enough to find materials for a 3 aught, and they still display well. Um, I, I was, I too enjoy looking at flies tied on big 8 aught hooks, um, and I admire them, but I have a practical economical sort of person. Um, the economics of tying on an 8-aught hook are enormous. Um, trying to find materials that are big enough to tie on an 8-aught hook is a challenge in and of itself. So I much, much prefer a slightly smaller size hook. 5 aught typically is a little bit large for me. Um, and I, I highly suggest for people who are just starting out in the world of classic Atlantic salmon flies, no larger than 3 aught. And actually it pays to get pretty... It pays to practice on smaller hooks, so like one aughts. Because again, economics. Um, if you're going to, you know, find the basic materials, it is much easier to find the basic materials for a one aught hook than it is an eight aught hook. So <clears throat> that is my suggestion. Five aught, like I said, pretty large for me, but you know, you, you can't deny that large hooks display well. So, you know, there's something to it. Knees matched okay. No, okay. Okay.
So let me wax my thread. I'm just going to build up a little bit of a thread. Okay. All right, there we go. <clears throat> Turn it around so you can see what I see. Since, <clears throat> um, you know, if you're not familiar, um, fly tires always have, no matter what they say, fly tires always have a good side and a bad side. The good side is the side which usually faces them, and the bad side is the side that usually faces away from them. <laughs> um, this is my good side. That's what I see when I'm tying. Looks great. I like it. Um, I've only tied a handful of poplins in my life. It is a pattern. It is one of my favorite um, patterns. Uh, <laughs> those of you who have been around the stream for a bit probably know that I'm not a huge fan of tying commonly tied flies. Um, I do feel like some flies get to be a little trite. Uh, but of those flies that are kind of trite, uh, I think the Popham's one of my favorites, um, to be honest. Uh, I just love the color combination um, and the general look and feel. So, yeah, I'm liking that. All right. Well, I know today was a little bit of a shorter stream. Um, like I uh, this is a fairly simple wing, all things considered. Um, the body is really the complicated part. Uh, so, you know, that went together pretty quick. And I uh, I do like pre-marrying the wings. Um, I don't like marrying wings on stream. I feel like it's boring, has a lot of downtime. Um, if you disagree with that sentiment and would like to see me marry wings on stream, Please feel free to let me know in the comments. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, there will be no stream next week for sure. Um, <clears throat> my wife and I are going on a little bit of a vacation. And by vacation, I mean we are renting a private cabin just down the road um, and spending a few nights not in our normal location. Um, we are going to clean the living crap out of that apartment. Well, not apartment, cabin, uh, before staying there. Um, so we're doing it safely. Uh, but um, we're going to be away from our normal technology next week or next weekend. Um, so no stream next week. Going to take a little bit of vacation time off. Um, and not time off from the stream. I know I put off this stream for a couple of days, and I'm sorry. But um, just kind of time away from work, mostly. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I did want to mention that there was a winner picked for the 500 follower Instagram uh, follower giveaway. Um, congratulations. You know who you were. Um, and uh, I'm glad you enjoy the flies. Please send me pictures of fish that you catch on them. Uh, I do appreciate that. Um, and I appreciate you hanging out with me. Um, yeah. So just at the end, as always, if you want to see more of my work and you just joined in the middle, um, check out the Instagram at justwondering.brad. Uh, and if you want to purchase any of the flies that you see me tie on the stream, uh, you can check out the Etsy shop, Studio 1213. Um, thanks for hanging out. Uh, have a good rest of your Sunday, and uh, I, will, I will see you in a couple weeks. See ya.